Not myself, no. I, I've been with the company for three years, um, pretty much since our in incarnation. Um, but Antics is based out of Cambridge, England. I work uh, here in downtown L.A. at L.A. Center Studios. Um, so I, I represent the Americas and um, the U.S. operation for, for sales marketing and, and kind of this kind of demonstration. Um, but I also work pretty closely with a lot of customers and, you know, welcome feedback, um, you know, and I'm always relaying that back to our development team. So, you know, if you have any thoughts or input or feedback, I'd love to hear it and we can, you know, hope to put that into the software. Okay. Um, so we've got uh, our car following its path. Uh, we've got our characters doing their thing. So let's talk a little bit about cameras. Um, again, this whole time we've been looking through this kind of master view that we can use to, um, you know, set up our set and our scene and, and get the action going. Um, it is a, is a real camera. It does have properties. Um, I can go into its properties and actually change all of my different lenses. Uh, you'll see I've got prime lenses here ranging from uh, a 15 millimeter lens. You see the change there um, all the way to a 200. So um, just by a simple click there, you can uh, audition different lenses and, and find the shot that you want. Um, now you can also even go into uh, what we call a custom lens, um, where you could you know, do something really bizarre like a, a four millimeter lens <laughs> and get this nice fisheye look. Um, you know, or you can go you know, to like a 225. So you can really do a custom uh, lens. You see you can also manually change your, your focal length here. I can you know, zoom all the way out or zoom, zoom back in. Um, and then I can come back into these, uh, these properties and set that um, back to one of my primes if I wish. Yes? Can, can you open multiple windows so you have a different camera in multiple windows? Absolutely, yes. Um, and, and let's do that right now. Um, so we've been looking through our master view. Let's, let's create a camera through this viewfinder to serve as our establishing shot maybe. So um, let's just uh, quickly remind myself what our action is here. So let's uh, start covering the scene here from uh, a little perspective angle view here. And we're framing up both of our characters. We'll maybe push in just a bit and we'll crane up and, and tilt down just slightly. So this could potentially be a, a boom shot or a crane shot here that we could uh, start off with to establish our scene. Um, so I'm going to create a camera through this viewfinder. I'm happy with this. I can even display my camera safe. Um, and really quickly when we're talking about our, our aspect ratio, I can actually change that. Um, go into all my different formats, um, including uh, whether I'm working on a, a DV cam with a two-third inch chip or a half inch chip. Um, so I've got all of my different uh, formats here. I can even go into uh, a 16.9. You see that here. Um, or we can go into, uh, you know, a switch over to uh, back to, you know, Super 35 for 70 millimeter. So you see I get my red safe zone here that will be my final shot. Um, so let's switch back to something just a little bit more uh, standard. Maybe go back to uh, 35 Academy. And let's now create that camera, like I said. So we'll just right click here. I'm going to create a, a new free camera. And so what I've done, if I just pull back with my master view, you'll see there's that camera we just created. And, and as you asked, we can do a couple different things with that. One, I can right click on it and open up a separate viewport window. and We'll just go ahead and dock this down here. I'll just close this window off for a little bit of real estate. So you can see now I have this nice split screen view. I can move this camera wherever I want. My master view over on the right and I've got my, uh, my new, newly created camera on the left and I can also even move this around in this window. Um, I can do anything with it and you'll see it moving uh, in real time on the right hand side. Um, as a, uh, a producer, a director, I can even go in and get the exact height of that camera. That's at 14 feet, 5 inches up here. Um, so you've got all your, your metrics, your data, if you want to hand that off to uh, your production team. So you can really use this as a, um, you know, a pre-planning tool. Before you get on set, you, you know roughly where to place your cameras. Um, there's always going to be exploration on set, as I'm sure you know, John. Uh, there's always going to be the problems you can't foresee, but hopefully with software like this, um, you can start to predict some of those ahead of time and really plan ahead and, and save that time on set. So we've got our, our separate window over here. We can hit play and you'll see the action play out in that window. And of course this, this camera's not doing anything yet. It's just a locked off camera that's watching our scene. Um, let's, let's go ahead and animate that camera or do something with it. Have it maybe crane down and, and push in on our character. So let's go ahead and, and look through it here in the big window. Um, so now we're looking through that camera. And I can actually 
do what we call a keyframe animation move for this camera. Um, it may sound a little more complex than it actually is. Uh, we've made it pretty easy for you. Basically, all I want to do is just hit this little keyframe button, and you'll see it generates these little flags for me here down under my camera track. Basically, what that's telling me is it's remembered this position, it's saving it, I'm free to move it. Um, so let's just start to scrub through our action and say as my uh, male character starts to open the door right about now, I want the camera to be right over the hood uh, looking at the two characters. So all I got to do now is just push in the camera to find that final shot that we want. And I'm just going to crane down. Let's get a nice maybe low angle shot here coming up the lights there. Let's just drop down a little bit more. There's our final shot. Um, so let's go ahead and just uh, hit that keyframe button again. And you'll see what's happened is the timeline's filled in for me. Um, basically, we're just going to go back to one and hit play. And you'll see Antics has filled in the gaps and animated the camera in between those two points over that time period that I defined. So as the car drives off, we get that nice shot, which will be a, a great cut point um, to cut to a camera that's going to uh, continue to cover the action. So uh, let's just switch back to my master view, uh, which is out here, and let's create a, a second camera that we can cut to uh, to cover the action. So let's say we want to put a camera over here that's going to target the camera as it drives off. Um, I can either create it through this viewfinder as we did before, um, or I can use some of these camera icons that you see up here. So this, this camera icon, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, create a camera here. So what this allows me to do is just hold down my left mouse button and create a camera and direct it at whatever I'd, look, uh, whatever I'd like to look at. So let's have my uh, camera go ahead and just look generally here at the car. Um, again, we can open up a, a separate viewport and see what that camera sees. And we'll just go ahead and load that down here. Now, we'll go ahead and have this camera just locked off. Um, we'll allow it to, um, I'll even pan over here, frame it up a little bit better before it drives away. And let's just go back to one. And let's have this camera target that vehicle as it drives off, continue to, to follow it and keep it in frame. So what I can do is actually, as the car starts to drive off here, let's have it target that camera. So I can take, uh, I'm sorry, target the vehicle. Let's take uh, the camera target, which is really just this bullseye icon. Um, you can see I can actually click in here to have it target that car door. And you'll see what's going to happen is it's going to automatically uh, pan, tilt, um, and, and keep that vehicle in frame for the duration of the rest of the take. Um, so I don't have to do anything. It's kind of having like an automatic manned uh, camera there that's going to just watch that car until it's finished with its action or until I tell it to look at something else. Let's say maybe I want it to now target the house. I can just click on that, and you'll see it's going to now uh, pan over to the house. So we can go back to uh, the beginning of the, the timeline take here, and you'll see as we play through this, um, with my, my target on, you're seeing some cameras jutting out of the back of my character's heads. Well, those are actually their uh, point of view cameras, uh, and you can cut to any character's point of view at any time as well. Um, so you don't have to set up a camera to match with their eye line. It's already loaded in there. You can even tell the characters where to look and where their eyes can look. Um, so getting back to, to this shot here on the target, you notice that we, we start to lose the car out of frame. Um, and it's not targeting until we get to uh, this point on the timeline here. So this point on the timeline right here tells me this is going to be locked on center frame for the duration of the take. Um, we are working on an offsetting, so you can frame something left third or right third, because um, as most DPs know, you don't want to frame something smack dab in the middle of the frame. So that's something we're working on, and I do have workarounds for that, but I just wanted to show you how simple it is to, to get that uh, vehicle right in, the, right in the middle of the frame and targeted for the rest of the take. Um, so what I can do is actually adjust how long it takes my camera to target the vehicle uh, by editing this little incline here. You see, if I bring this all the way back to the start of this track, my camera is just going to snap right to targeting that vehicle. But let's drag this out just a little bit so it takes maybe just over a second for my camera to, uh, to lock onto that car. And now you see we get a little bit more of the car and we're not losing out of frame as much. Um, so I'll just bring this back just slightly and this will probably be more what I'm looking for. So now we're not losing the car as much.